Hello and welcome to Sums Up, a channel about how to survive in the online jungle. My name is Bradley and today I've planned another experiment. You've all probably heard of identity verification services, right? I mean, these are services that ensure not only that your documents are legitimate, but that you are who you say you are. So if you've ever rented a car or opened a crypto wallet, you've probably sent your documents through one of these identity verification systems. Well, today I'll be creating some fake documents. Specifically, I'll be faking my own documents in order to try and fool a few of these different identity verification providers. To be honest, I'm quite interested how this experiment will turn out. This is just a quick disclaimer. My actions in this video are not intended to fool anyone. So I'm obviously not going to be using the results of this experiment to cause any harm. My goal, rather, is to demonstrate whether modern technologies sufficiently protect us and our identities online, as well as obviously to warn others about potential scams that could possibly exist. So for starters, I'll need a fake identity. I could come up with one myself, or I could use one of the many automated online instruments for doing so. So let's check out one of these sites, and I'm going to create my fake identity in just a few clicks. Uh, I don't really like this one. Ah, here's one I like. Let's go with this one. Now, here we're in need of a passport photo specifically, so this task is slightly more complicated since the subject needs to be looking directly into the camera. But after a few dozen clicks, I think we have what we need. I mean, this guy fits the part, I think. <laughs> so now we've uploaded my passport into Photoshop. First, we're gonna swap out the photos. The hardest part here is preserving the holographic security film, but let's do this. There's also one other important detail, and that's the so-called MRZ, or Machine Readable Zone, and it's usually located at the bottom of the page somewhere. MRZs can be scanned either through photo or video, or through specifically built scanners, you know, the kind that you see in passport control. These machines use either white, light, or infrared. MRZs are essentially codes, and in my case, P stands for passport. But there are also other elements of this code that denote things such as the issuing authority or the nationality of the individual, their name, surname, etc. To be honest, I have no idea how to create a proper MRZ, so I'm just going to try my best to make it look like something realistic. Great, so all of the main changes have been made. Now we have a completely new identity, and this is what we've ended up with. So now we'll attempt to register with a few different services to see how good their defenses are. Right, so this is Zipmex. Let's have a look at their sign-up procedure. I'm from the UK, so technically I fall under the global category here. So let's use my email. Password, let's use a random password. Let's say invitation code. Nope. Create account. Okay, nice. Nice. We're verified, we're in. Okay, so I need to verify my mobile to start KYC. So let's try... Okay, so I should have received a code. Let's wait. Okay. No, we haven't received any code. 39, 38, 37, 36. Ah, oh, this is so long. I think this technology is so good, it knows I'm going to upload a fake document before I've even verified my phone number. This is incredible. Five, four, three, two, one. Ha! Okay, resend. Nope. Wait three minutes before resending. Right guys, the code's not coming through for Zipmex, so I cannot get verified. I've already tried twice, I've waited six minutes, um, and I'm giving up. Let's try registering with Wirex. First step is 
to select the country. We're in the United Kingdom, so let's say that. Right, can't log in. They only accept non-UK users. Password, um, let's say, does that work? Thank you for registering. Please verify your email address. Standard, let's go do that now. Okay, so let's put in my home address here. Right, details, first name. No, I'm not, this isn't my real name. So the name in my passport is actually, I think, according to my fake document, I am Mr. Paul Young Peak. And I am a uh, citizen of the United Kingdom. Next, my phone number, right, here we go. Please say this actually sends me the code this time. I'm waiting. Come on. Oh my god, it actually came through. <laughs> to continue verification, please scan this QR code with your mobile device and proceed to the link in the QR code. <sighs> so I'm going to open that in Safari. Now I've already downloaded the Wirex app, so I'm going to go straight to the app, open that, and we can start verification. So let's choose a document. Uh, I think I'm going to use my international passport here. Not mine, but a forged one of mine. Okay, make sure these are clear. Yeah, let's upload that photo. And then we just take a video selfie. So let's try that as well. Right, speak out loud. Nine, no, eight, nine, six. <laughs> I think that's done. Next, turn your head left. And then face forward. Right, okay. Let's upload that video. Uh, we're verifying your information. This can occasionally take as long as a few days. I suppose that's it. So now we wait. So I got an email back from Wirex and they said, uh, Dear Paul Young, we're closing your Wirex account. Now, unfortunately, our most recent check has revealed that there is cause to permanently block your account. So it's clear that I couldn't get past their verification procedures. And I suppose that's a good thing. Let's try uphold. Same procedure, sign up. Full legal name. My name is Paul. Um, Paul Young. All right, confirm your email. There we go, verify. Let's click OK. Nice, let's get verified. First of all, I need to fill in my information regarding where I live, all right, not a problem. The screen's frozen. And this button isn't actually clickable, I can't click this. So there's really nothing I can do here, I can't, I can't get verified. Next up is Mercury O, bridging fears in crypto worlds. Right, let's try and get verified. So let's create a wallet. And my phone number is this. And let's go, get the SMS code. That was actually very quick, okay. 51. So now I need to go to my email. That's nice, let's copy that. And now we need to enter the personal information. So, my ID, obviously, Paul Young. <laughs> so let's verify. We've got a verification process here. So let's say we're from the United Kingdom. Now I'm using a passport. So let's upload that passport. As you can see, I've uploaded my passport. So let's continue. And now we need to face the camera. Let's move our head in a small circle. 
Okay, so I can't pass the test, presumably because I haven't passed the face match. We actually verify that the person in the document is the same as the person shown through the liveness check. Now, I am not the same person in this passport that I've loaded, which is why I am unable to get verified. Pretty cool, didn't pass the check. So today I'm going to be taking another crack at trying to fool a few identity verification solutions online. Now the problem last time when we tried this is that the picture in the identity document wasn't actually me. It was a random person taken from an online database of um, unreal people. Now this time I'm actually going to be using my own face. Let's see how this turns out. So first up is going to be Wirex. So let's verify my identity. So first of all, we need to upload a photo ID. This isn't a problem. I've actually saved something on my phone. So let's go. Oh, interesting. So we need to enable camera access. Okay. Right, and it's asking me to take a photo of the document. So let's take a photo of the document on the computer. Try taking a photo manually. Right, upload photo. Take a video selfie, interesting. Okay, so speak out loud and move your head. Finish actions in under 20 seconds. Absolutely fine. Zero, one, two. Turn the head right. Face forward. Nice, okay, let's upload that video. Right, interesting, okay, so they're verifying my information. So let's see what they say. I hope I get through. Denied. And here we go, so Wirex have finally come to their senses. They've said, dear Paul, to adhere to regulatory requirements, we're obliged to conduct compliance checks on our client base, of course. Unfortunately, our most recent check has revealed that there is cause to permanently block your account. So this is an example of a final rejection notice. They've detected the fraudery, and that's great. No fraudsters getting through Wirex today. Let's move on to B Sharp. This is our second platform. Okay, so we need to scan the QR code here. So perhaps we can take another photo here. Brightness down a bit or brightness up? I think that's a bit better. Let's try. Good, okay, we're through. Next step is to take a selfie. So let's do that. The nice thing about this service is I don't actually have to download an app in order to get verified, which I quite like. I can do this straight through my mobile browser. Okay, so I've taken a selfie. Clearly shows my face, let's confirm that. Right, upload successful, great. So, computer may take a few seconds to update. Let's go back to the computer now. And submit verification. Verification is complete. Come on, verify me. Oh, interesting. Okay, we've also got an email here from B Sharp. Dear Paul, our system can't certify your passport because the screenshot is not accepted. Moreover, your last name and nationality were wrong. Can you please tell me what your needs are exactly and what are the reasons for your future transactions? This is quite good, actually. It's quite a personal response and clearly the verification has gone to manual review. Now, she's detected that there's definitely something wrong here, but she's also um, well, in understanding that there may be a mistake on my end, so she's trying to investigate that more, which is very good. Well, let's actually move on to another provider. So we've got here this platform, Mercury O. Let's upload the passport here. 
This is nice that I don't actually have to go onto my phone because that's a bit of a hassle. It's quite convenient, I can do everything through the desktop. But obviously I have a little bar here to continue on my phone if I want to. Let's click next. So, liveness, presumably. That's nice, I can do it on the computer as well, so I don't need to do it on my phone. Let's allow my camera. All right, there we go. Roll your head in a circular motion. Let's do that. Nice, past liveness. <laughs> okay, and they're checking my data as well. Ah, interesting. Okay, so you can see here that a rejection has happened, but also this is a notice of a final rejection, which means I may have been detected on blacklists, there may be fraudulent activity detected or something like that. This is a good notice. Now, this means that I'm not invited to retry, which is quite a good thing. If I'm a real fraudster, you don't want this guy anywhere near your system. Okay, so today we've examined four different brands of KYC toolkits, I would say, and Paul Young cannot get verified through any of them. I suppose that's a pretty good thing, and it's an indicator that we have a very robust KYC infrastructure in this world, even across different brands and different price points. But I would say this, we've uploaded a very simple fake. So if you think you've got any tips on how to make a fake that maybe would get past these KYC restrictions, well, let us know and we'll try that. Let's use one existing company's document verification procedure as an example. First of all, the authenticity of a document is verified by analyzing pixels in order to expose any edited areas. After that, anti-Photoshop technology is used to determine whether or not any elements of the document have been copied. For instance, if the serial number from a legitimate document has been pasted onto a fraudulent one. In fact, this is the sort of thing that gets fraudsters into trouble a lot of the time, as anti-Photoshop technology is fine-tuned to detect any elements of an image that have been either copied or inserted. Now after this, the security features of the document need to be checked. These are the stamps, signs, fonts, and holograms that can demonstrate whether or not a document is indeed real. However, detecting these features is a very delicate process and it doesn't always guarantee 100% accurate results. Now, even with those advanced ultraviolet scanning devices that you might see at passport control, you can get this wrong. So you can imagine the mistakes can be made when analyzing a document based on a photo that was taken on a seven-year-old Android phone, right? This is why verification has to be supported by liveness checks. Liveness technology effectively helps to identify a person and then matches them to their document. Furthermore, liveness actually determines whether a person is even a human being in the first place and not just a mask or a photo or something. And obviously, this is a far cry from just checking whether a document is expired or not, or if the name of the document holder is even spelled correctly. I hope this has been interesting for those of you that are interested in staying safe in the online jungle, but also disincentivizing for those that are looking to get past these identity verification systems. But anyway, I'm Bradley, this is SumSub, and thank you for watching.